Hey guys, Insane Mike here, at it again, another video, continuing on with my 100 favorite films of all time. And in between shooting the last couple videos, I was looking at what's still on the, on the table here, kind of changed my mind about a couple of titles. So I just gotta say, like, I'm sitting here saying that these are my 100 favorite movies, but, um... That's just at this moment, like, you know, things change, uh, tastes changed, uh, and it was really hard to narrow it down to a hundred as it is. So, you know, like, even after doing all these videos, the next day I'll change, probably change my mind on some of them. That's just the way I am. But let's get into it because we still have a ton of movies to talk about. <clears throat> First off, 1975, this movie, um... It's the movie I've seen in the theater more than any other film, uh, mostly for mostly because of the audience participation. It's it's probably one of the most fun movie going experiences of all times. Another one of my all time favorite musicals, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. I know every line of this movie front to back. I know all the songs. Uh, huge fan of of the music in this. Um, Susan Sarandon is gorgeous in this movie. Um, Richard O'Brien is a genius, uh, and I I know the audience participation, audience participation front to back. This is the DVD version. I have it on Blu-ray as well, but I really like this DVD version. This has got um, both it and the Blu-rays got audience participation tracks. This one I I think is just a bit more superior than the Blu-ray one. That that's just me. Moving on, going back to Italy because uh, I talked about how I'm a big fan of Italian horror cinema and. This one is my all-time favorite Lucio Fulci movie. Fulci is another one of my favorite filmmakers, and this one is my favorite. Now, you might think, oh, it's zombie. Well, I hate to break it to you, folks, but it's not zombie. My favorite Lucio Fulci film, again, from my beautiful um, uh, Anchor Bay tin box collection, uh, 1981's The Beyond this movie is awesome. It's just, it, it is, the, I think it's probably one of the most artistic films of Fulci's, uh, Fulci's catalog. It's definitely one of those, like, when people say that uh, Italian horror films lack a lot of plot and structure and storyline, this is definitely a prime example of that. But it's ex this one's more excusable than probably most for me because... This one is just a nightmare on celluloid. This this is just this is just pure people's darkest dreams, darkest darkest uh, nightmares put on film. So you know when you have a nightmare, there is no reality base to it, and this movie's just like that. And there's just no getting out of the sheer. Once that doorway to hell is opened up, there's just there's just no escaping. And you just keep these people just keep falling down further and further in the rabbit hole. Also, a lot of great gore, but just some of the imagery in this movie. The final shot of this movie, I think, is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. You know, this is pure art right here, and it's it's another great tin set. This one is um, three thousand three hundred fifty-six out of twenty thousand. So, hmm, hmm. <clears throat> um, next, I am a, I, 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 out of all the different horror fran 80s horror franchises, my favorite, my boy, Jason Voorhees. I'm a huge Friday 13th fan. I love them all, but my all-time favorite, and I love this movie so much that it actually breaks into the top 100, that is from 1986, Friday 13th, part 6, Jason Lives. Uh... Um, this one, it, this one really interjects a lot of great horror into it. It does a great job with a lot of the Friday Thirteenth. Did I say horror? A lot of great comedy interjects a lot of great comedy into this, um, which you never really got before. But again, it's comedy that is um, some of it's character based. Some of it, none of it is at the expense of Jason. You know, no like Jason slipping on a banana peel. No laughs and guffaws when it comes to Jason. When Jason's there, shit is serious. But there's a lot of other stuff, mostly through like the the 
the use of, of different storytelling techniques where some of the comedy comes in, especially in some of the editing, you know. Do I look like a farthead? And then it cuts to the kids screaming, yay, you know, shit like that. Or the American Express card and the and floating in the water, you know, little little things like that. Um, I, I, this is like, I, my favorite Jason is Zombie Jason, the Jason that's been brought back to life. Um, and this is the first of that as well. Also has Tom Matthews as Tommy Jarvis. I love the Tommy Jarvis character. And Tom Matthews, who's also in Return of the Living Dead, another one of my all-time favorite films. Um, Tom Matthews does the best, I think, Tommy Jarvis. Uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of great little nods to horror fans in this. There's some really beautiful shots of just like the opening shot of the, of the woods with like this like fog kind of rolling in really creepy looking some great gothic horror imagery within this film as well um so yeah this is um so but it does I, I think i was saying before it does some great use of the friday 13th different tropes but at the same time throws puts things on you know kind of flips things around you know from a friday 13th film you expect there to be like you know senseless nudity this movie contains no no nudity Sure, and then, yeah, you expect it to take place in the summer camp where teen counselors are getting killed off one by one. But this is like one of the rare ones that actually has children attending the camp as well. So, um, you know, it does a lot of things that you uh, also don't normally see in a Friday 13th film. Uh, and there's just, there's just a lot of great subtlety thing, subtle things in there that uh, you don't really pick up on until you watch it like a hundred times. Like things that Jason uses that appear in the environment that are set up in the environment before you even realize it the gloves that he's wear that he wears is what Tommy there are the gloves that Tommy Jarvis is wearing when he digs up his corpse you know the machete that he gets is from the uh, from the paintballers in the woods so you know I, I just I, and I love how they, they set those little tiny details up that, that kind of like make up what Jason is doing throughout the film so Going back to comedy, 1983, uh, from the Great White North, I love these guys, the McKenzie Brothers and Strange Brew. This movie is so freaking funny. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know really what to say about it. If you've never seen it before, definitely check it out. But the Bob and Doug McKenzie characters, the fact that Mike, Max von Sydow is in this movie is crazy. Um, in this, like, you know goofball comedy and there's my max von Sydow as the main villain um but uh love me some strange brew another movie i can repeat frontwards and backwards so moving on sticking in comedy we got a lot of comedies in this episode um from 1980 uh i'm also a fan of another filmmaker robert zemeckis but this is my all-time favorite robert zemeckis movie and i i i love a lot of robert Z i'm a huge back to the future fan who Framed Roger Rabbit is, like, so innovative and genius. Um, but this is my favorite. It's his attempt at, at a screwball uh, TNA comedy. Used Cars. Kurt Russell is awesome in this. He's hilarious. Again, Garrett Graham is in it. Yeah! Told you. Huge fan of Garrett Graham. He has shown up a lot in this, in this list. And we finally threw all the Garrett Graham movies in this. Probably not, but that's three we've talked about so far, at least. Um, <clears throat> yeah, really funny movie. If you've never seen Used Cars, you need to see it. And it's really fun. with the Anytime you have a commentary track with Kurt Russell, it's really fun. Because he's just sitting there and he's just laughing at everything. He's just, he is having a ball and his fun is contagious. So, it's awesome. Now, now we can kind of go back to... Uh, Oops. Well, we can kind of go back to horror here a little bit. And back to, again, my all-time favorite filmmaker, George Romero. And if we were to, like, get rid of the zombie movies, um, why would we do that, first of all? But my favorite Romero movie outside of the zombie trilogy is 1978's Martin. I don't think that year is right. I think IMDb screwed up. That doesn't sound right. Regardless of the year, doesn't matter. This movie's timeless. See? Um, he does, George Romero does for vampires in this movie, uh, 
like what George Romero did for zombies in Night of the Living Dead. Um, kind of takes takes all the zombie lore and spins it, puts it uh, puts it on the air, and puts it in modern day for well, for this film, modern day um, urban Pittsburgh. You know, so um, there's a lot of great social commentary of like um, of life in Pittsburgh at the time. But a lot of great silent performances, and again, you know, it's all in the editing and the so much of the storytelling is told through through the lens and through the editing, and not through dialogue. And this movie is just great, and just the idea of like, is he a vampire or isn't he? Is he just deranged? Has his family pushed him to the point of insanity where he thinks he's a vampire and he needs human blood, or is he truly a vampire? But just without the magic involved, you know, just the internal eternal life and the need to drink blood. But he can survive just fine in the daylight. He never sprouts fangs, so he has to use razor blades to get the blood that he needs, and which are really awesome, gruesome Tom Savini effects that are really effective. Um, not so much the color of the blood. Uh, that's a problem in a lot of 70s movies. They, they didn't get the color of the blood quite right, but... Regardless, Martin is amazing. Next, I'm also a Jackie Chan fan. Um, I used to really be huge in Jackie Chan in the late 80s, early 90s. And one of his films has always been one of my favorite films. And it's a little confusing here in the States. Um, it's from 1986, I believe. Um, the, in the States, it's called... Operation Condor 2, Armor of God, but technically this is Armor of God, um, and this is the first one in this, you know, just like part one and part two, and this is the, technically the part one, Armor of God, and it's awesome, it's got a lot of great Jackie Chan humor, some amazing stunts in it, this is the film that, almost, that Jackie Chan almost killed himself making, uh, he's got a big hole in his skull from making this movie, um, he fights the the scene where he fights like the monks, or he fights like the the weirdo women in leather, and the towards the end of the film, it's just freaking amazing. So, um, you know, I've kind of grown out of Jackie Chan, especially when he started making uh, a lot of films in the states. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I'm still a fan, but I don't rush out to see him like I did in the, these early films. And and I think also his films nowadays suffer from the fact that he doesn't direct them. Some of his best movies. Um, from the Golden Harvest days is the ones he directed, and this is one of them. Um, I'm calling it Armor of God, even though it's Operation Condor 2, Armor of God. Because what's messed up is that the names of the movies are Armor of God, and in part two is called Armor of God, Operation Condor, but it's not this movie, it's the other one. That is called Operation Condor, here in the store, whatever. Moving on. Um... <clears throat> Now, I'm also a big fan of Don Cassarelli, the filmmaker, as well. And, unfortunately, not all of his movies uh, have made it in the top 100, which is kind of shocking. Um, and you would also think, like, I would pick the first Phantasm movie to be in the top 100. But, actually, I'm going with 1988's Phantasm 2. Because I've watched this one way more than the first one. There's things I love about this movie. I love the, like, um, six-barreled, sawed-off shotgun you know, a lot of the, the 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 car is awesome. I love the car. Uh, they really step up the effects in this movie. Um, but uh, this is the first one I saw. I saw this before I ever saw the uh, the original. And it's kind of one of those sequels that, like, man, yeah, it's all right if you didn't see the first movie. You're just gonna be just confused if you were to have seen the first movie, because <laughs> you know. This, this series has been one of those movies that a new movie comes out and it, and it answers some questions from the previous films, but then opens up 20 more questions. So, last one I'm going to talk about in this video, uh, I kind of mentioned it in, in an earlier video, and that is uh, 1984's Night of the Comet. Um, man, I just remember... My sister had Showtime. We didn't have it at my house. Um, she had it at her house. And so she would, uh, um, I think it was for Christmas, she just brought me some tapes with a bunch of movies that she taped off of Showtime. Um, and Night of the Comet was one of them. So this movie 
when I watch this movie, it really brings back a lot of feelings of Christmas for me because I watched this movie, I swear, three or four times on Christmas that year that I got that tape. Uh, I love I love this movie. Again, it's pure 80s gold. I, I also like the, I'm also a big fan of post-apocalyptic, you know, films. And this is like, this is the most fun out of any post-apocalyptic film. Because you're not talking some dystopian society. Everybody's just erased away and turned into like dust. Except for except for a few zombies here and there and a few normal people that just happen to survive. And two of the survivors are just fun-loving teenage valley girls. So, so it's just, you get a lot of fun scenes of them like ransacking the mall my favorite of like taking over the radio station and you know and that's their like home there um the opening scenes in the movie theater that aesthetic is always really cool and uh, the the lead in this her arcade game of choice is tempest and tempest was always my jam back in the arcade games so so that's it for this batch um man we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm going to try to keep adding more <coughs> movies to each video so we can get through this. But uh, that's it for this one, and we'll talk to you again really soon. Thanks.